Purpose of Financial Documents Task 1. For this task, you need to be able to demonstrate an understanding of each aspect of three financial documents, profit and loss account, balance sheet and cash flow forecast, and you need to be able to discuss the reasons why a business would prepare each of the financial documents. The first document is a profit and loss account. A profit and loss account is created at the end of the financial year to show whether the business has made a profit or loss. So there are several aspects to a profit and loss account. First of all, sales revenue. This is the money that a business gets from selling its goods and services. This is calculated by price times quantity sold. Cost of sales is another word for variable costs and they are costs that can be directly attributed to making the product or service so could be materials for example. If we take sales revenue, take away cost of sales, that gives us gross profit. So in this example 120,000 take away 25,000 gives us a gross profit of 95,000. Expenses is another word for fixed costs. So in this example we've got rent, labour, utilities and administration. Utilities include gas, electricity and water. Administration would be things like um, accountancy costs for example. We add all those together, so in this example we get a total expenses of 82,000. To get our operating profit, we take the total expenses away from the gross profit. So in this example, 95,000 take away 82,000 gives us an operating profit of 13,000. The profit and loss account would be created by the owners of the business to find out whether the business has made a profit or a loss. They can then use that to decide whether they're going to pay any div div dividends to shareholders and how much the dividends are likely to be. In a small business, in a sole trade or a partnership, it could be used for the owners of the business to decide whether they can take any money out of the business. For a sole trade or a partnership, this will be called drawings. It can be used to decide on future plans. So, is the business doing well enough to expand? If they've made a, a big operating profit, they might be able to finance an, some expansion. So, perhaps in a restaurant, it might be building an extension, or it might be buying new vehicles, or uh, buying more machinery. They can decide which products or services they focus on. So if they itemise their sales revenue and look at where the money comes from each of the products that they sell in their range, they could perhaps decide to you know, stop selling one particular uh, product um, and perhaps raise the sales from another product, so produce more of another product in their range. They can decide whether they need to do some more advertising perhaps if sales revenue has been disappointing in the year. You know, they might want to advertise to try and attract new customers. They'll definitely need a profit and loss account in order to attract other investors. So shareholders wouldn't put their money, they wouldn't buy shares in a business that wasn't making a profit. You know, very unlikely anyway. Perhaps um, uh, venture capitalists might invest in a business that wasn't making any profit. So think about businesses on you know, people like the Dragon's Den. If they thought they could turn the business around and make it be profitable, perhaps they would invest. But usually shareholders will want to see that the business is making a profit and they're going to get some return on their investment. Uh, to get finance from a bank, so an overdraft or a bank loan, the bank again would want to see if the business was profitable to make sure they'd be able to repay any debt. Finally, profit and loss account is a legal requirement. You have to provide this document to the Inland Revenue to prove how much income, ta sorry, how much corporation tax should be paid on the business's profits and to prove that they are paying the correct amount of national insurance for their workers. Second document is a balance sheet. A balance sheet basically shows the value of a business. It shows what the business owns and what money has been invested in the business. So, working from the top, we start off with fixed assets. An asset is something that a business owns. And a fixed asset is something that the business owns that doesn't change on a day-to-day -day basis. So, in this example, we've got machinery, factory and vehicles. Now, those things can change you know, so the value of those things can change. Perhaps if the business buys more machinery, that value would go up. And obviously over time, the vehicles are going to be worth less because of depreciation. But fixed assets would only be valued once a year. So we produce a balance sheet once a year as at a point in time. Current assets are things the business owns that change on a day-to-day -day basis in value. So, for example, stock obviously is going to be changing. They're going to be ordering more stock, using up stock, you know, so that's going to change. Debtors are customers that have not yet paid their invoices, so customers that owe money to the business. And cash is cash in the bank 
or petty cash that the business has got on their premises. Current liabilities are debts that are to be repaid within one year. So in this example we've got an overdraft from the bank and we've got creditors. Creditors are people the business owes money to, so for example suppliers that they've not yet paid for their materials. Working capital is calculated by current assets take away current liabilities. So in this example 64 take away 40 gives us a working capital of 24. Net assets then form the top half of our balance sheet which is shown by being above this yellow line. So we would take fixed assets of 670 and add on the working capital of 24 to give us net assets of 694. And we want to show how this has been financed, so where the money has come from to buy these assets. So we look at the bottom half of the balance sheet below the yellow line and we can see that this has been financed, the business has been financed by share capital, which is money from shareholders, long term loans, so loans that are due to be repaid in over one year, and reserves. Reserves is money from profit that's been made in previous years. So if we add that up, we get the capital employed, which in this example is 694. So we're showing the money that's in the business and what it's been used to buy. So the top half, what we've bought, the bottom half, where the money's come from. We always have to have net assets and capital employed being the same. That's why it's called a balance sheet, because those two figures balance. So why would we produce a balance sheet? Well, a balance sheet provides a measure of the business's value. So, for example, if the current owners of the business wish to sell, then any prospective buyers would want to know how much the business is worth. The working capital illustrates whether the business has sufficient funds to pay their day-to-day -day bills, so whether their current assets are greater than their current liabilities. It will also be needed for banks or for other investors in order to attract, ex attract external finance. Final document is a cash flow forecast. Cash flow forecast shows money coming into and going out of a business. It doesn't show profit. It's really important that you make that point clear in your coursework. Cash flow is not profit. It's just money coming into and going out of the business. So if we look first of all at the top of the cash flow, we have cash inflows. So this is money coming into the business. Now the main source of cash inflows is going to be sales revenue, money that comes from selling goods and services. But in this example, in January, this business also takes out a loan. Okay, so the loan is received in January, 125000 We then look at cash outflows, so things the business spends money on. Okay, so in this example we've got rent, utilities, suppliers, wages and administration. If we add those together, we get total cash outflows. To get net cash flow, we do cash inflows take away cash outflows, which looks at the balance of money that's received and paid out during one month. Okay, so we can see, first of all, in January, the net cash flow is 58,000. 165 take away 107 gives us, gives us 58,000. The next figure down is opening balance. Now this is any money that's left over from the previous month. The closing balance is what the business will have at the end of the month and it's calculated by net cash flow add opening balance. So 58,000 add 110,000 gives us 168,000. The closing balance from January becomes the opening balance for February. Now it's really important on cash flow forecast that you take notice of the sign. Sometimes negative is shown with a minus sign, sometimes negative numbers are shown with brackets around them. So here in February the net cash flow is negative, the business is going to spend more money than it's received from selling its goods and services. So we get a net cash flow of minus 68,000. So we would still do minus 63,000, add 168,000, gives us a closing balance of 105,000 and again that becomes the opening balance for the next month. So why would we produce a cash flow forecast? Well it shows evidence of whether the business has sufficient money coming in during each month to be able to pay its bills. So we might need that to prove for example to a bank that we would be able to meet loan repayments and so we would be able to take out a loan. 
It would also show if a business needs extra money in one month, so perhaps they might negotiate with the bank an overdraft. If they can prove that in all the other months they are able to pay their bills, perhaps the business might consider that giving them an overdraft. It can also help a business to make plans so they can decide in which month they could best afford new machinery, for example. A cash flow forecast is what the business thinks will happen in the future, so it's only a forecast, a prediction. A cash flow statement has exactly the same layout, but it's what has happened in the past. So a cash flow forecast would be really useful you know, to make sure that the business does have enough money to pay its day-to-day -day bills. A cash flow statement can show what money was spent on during the last few months. So you need to apply each of these pieces of theory to create your coursework task one. So you will find the writing frame on the P drive, okay, and there are 16 questions that you need to cover in this task. So for each of these you will need to show a screenshot of the financial documents with uh, text boxes Okay, so using text boxes, um, you can label each of the aspects. You can also perhaps use these call out boxes, but you need to be able to label each aspect of the um, three financial documents. So you would need to be able to say, you know, first of all, you know, what a fixed asset is, what a current asset is. So you need to be able to label those, and that's one part of the coursework. The second part of the coursework is explaining in your own words why a business will produce each of those documents. It's really important that whatever you use as your source, that is in your own words, otherwise you won't be able to pass this assignment. Okay, thank you. Off you go.